at the dawn of independence, India was an underdeveloped country. With its population having no access to good medical care. Life expectancy was just 32 years and infant mortality as high as 180 per thousand births. However, living conditions improved as the government built hospitals, educated people about health related issues and conducted immunization programs. These steps nearly doubled the life expectancy rate and lowered the infant and maternal mortality rate. But with the birth rate remaining more or less the same, this led to population explosion. A situation where the population of a country far outstrips its sustaining capacity. In fact, India's population which was 350 million during independence went past the 1 billion mark in 2000 making India the second most populous country after China. Demographers fear that if the current birth rate of 1.7 percent is not lowered India's natural and economic resources will be strained depriving many of even basic necessities such as food, clothing and shelter. To arrest the population growth, the government has raised the legal marriageable age of girls and boys to 18 and 21 years respectively. The government is also using the media to drive home the benefits of having smaller families. Moreover, government agencies are also actively encouraging couples to go for contraception which is an intentional prevention of an unwanted pregnancy through the use of contraceptive methods. Contraceptive methods can be broadly categorized as natural or traditional methods, barrier methods, intrauterine devices, oral contraceptives, injectables, implants and surgical methods. Natural methods, the oldest form of contraception, work on the principle of circumventing the chances of the sperm fertilizing the ovum. They are of three types, periodic abstinence, coitus interruptus, and lactational amenorrhea. In periodic abstinence, couples abstain from copulation during the fertile period, which occurs between days 10 and 17 of the menstrual cycle. This is when ovulation or the release of the egg occurs, which increases the chances of conception. Another natural method is coitus interruptus, which is also known as the withdrawal method. Lactational amenorrhea, or the absence of menstruation during lactation, is another natural method which works on the principle that lactating women don't menstruate for up to six months following parturition. This is because the hormone oxytocin which stimulates milk production also suppresses ovulation. Naturally, without ovulation conception can't occur. Lactational amenorrhea as well as other natural methods of contraception are safe and have no side effects as there are no devices, medicines or hormones involved. However, 
Natural methods aren't very effective compared to other contraceptive methods such as the barrier method. This method makes use of either a condom, diaphragm or cervical or vault cap which act as barriers to prevent the sperm and ovum from meeting. Condoms, which are available for both men and women, are made of thin rubber or a latex sheath. While condoms for males are rolled over the penis, condoms for women are inserted in the vagina where they block the sperm's entry into the reproductive tract by covering the cervix. Most couples prefer using condoms since they are cheap, easily available and offer privacy as they can be self-inserted. Moreover, condoms also offer protection against sexually transmitted diseases such as AIDS and syphilis. A condom, however, can be used only once and every new coitus session requires the use of a new condom. While condoms are available for both men and women, diaphragms, cervical caps and vaults are meant only for women. These dome-shaped barriers are made of rubber and are inserted in the vagina. Did you know that the contraceptive efficiency of a barrier can be increased by applying spermicidal creams, jellies and foams? That's because these products contain chemicals that kill sperm. Another contraceptive method is the use of intrauterine devices, commonly called IUDs. These are used by couples who want to delay pregnancy or space out their children. IUDs are tiny T-shaped devices that doctors insert into the uterus through the vagina. There are many types of IUDs ranging from non-medicated IUDs such as lipus loop to copper releasing IUDs like copper T, copper 7, multi load 375 to hormone releasing IUDs such as progesta cert and LNG 20. Each type of IUD works on a different principle. Non-medicated IUDs, for instance, work by increasing the phagocytosis of the sperm that reach the uterus, while copper IUDs release copper ions that obstruct the ascent of the sperm into the fallopian tubes as well as reduce their fertilizing ability. On the other hand, hormone-releasing IUDs make the uterus inhospitable for implantation by thickening the cervical mucus which makes it impossible for the sperm to enter through the cervix. Apart from IUDs, women can also use oral contraceptives called the pill. This is a small tablet containing small doses of either progestogen or a combination of progestogen and estrogen. Progestogen thickens the cervical mucus which hinders the sperm's motility. While estrogen obstructs the pituitary gland from producing luteinizing hormone which prevents ovulation. Ideally, a woman should take the first pill of the pack within five days of the menstrual cycle and continue taking it for 21 days. During the next seven days, when the pill is not taken, the woman experiences her menstrual cycle. 
following this, she needs to start taking the pill again. Progestogens alone or in combination with estrogen are also available as injections or implants that are to be placed under the skin. However, in comparison to pills, they remain effective much longer. While women have several contraceptive options, men have only two options for birth control condoms and a terminal surgical or sterilization method called vasectomy. In this case, a tiny part of the vas deferens is removed and then tied to the scrotum by bearing a small incision on the same. In tubectomy, a sterilization method for women, a minuscule part of the fallopian tube is removed and tied up through a small incision in either the abdomen or through the vagina. Both tubectomy and vasectomy are successful methods of birth control. But they are irreversible and should only be adopted if a couple wishes to have no more children. In addition to surgical methods, Couples today have several other contraceptive methods to choose from. However, before opting for a particular method, one should weigh its pros and cons and seek a doctor's advice, as some contraceptives can cause side effects such as abdominal pain and irregular menstrual bleeding.